Hi, everyone. We're going to get started. Thank you so much for joining our Access Health uh, Connecticut webinar today on health equity and why it matters. Uh, if you're familiar with Access Health, you'll know that our uh, tagline is uh, healthier community or healthier people, healthier communities. And so in order to build a healthier Connecticut, uh, it's important that we understand the factors that uh, exacerbate health disparities. And in this webinar, we will discuss the social determinants of health. Uh, to gain an understanding of how, as a community, we can all work toward um, improving health outcomes in every community. So just uh, a few housekeeping things before we get started. Uh, you should be automatically muted uh, uh, as you logged in, and your video, um, if you are joining via computer with a webcam, should also be turned off. Um, so please keep your audio muted for, during the duration of the webinar. If you do have a question for us, uh, those uh, will be answered at the end of the webinar. Feel free to uh, type it into the chat box, and our presenter will answer it during the Q&A section. We also had um, some great uh, questions come in from when you registered, so we'll get to those as well. Um, if you prefer to listen to the webinar by phone instead of your computer audio, you can click on the Join Audio icon and select the Phone Call tab, and a window will appear, which will give you the dial-in number and uh, with the meeting ID. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand that over to our presenter for today, Evelyn Mandia. Uh, Evelyn and I both work with uh, Grossman Hines, um, and we are a public affairs firm that has been working with Access Health since, gosh, I want to say about probably over five years now, right, Evelyn, um, doing yeah. um, with their marketing and outreach team. So Evelyn, I'll let you take it away. Terrific. Thank you, Quinn. First, let me test. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay, terrific. So everyone else should be right in line. And welcome everyone. As Quinn mentioned, my name is Evelyn Mantilla and we do work together with Grossman Hines uh, and we serve Access Health Connecticut in the capacity of uh, conducting all of the outreach activity for which many of you as participants here have been part of in one way, shape, or form. I'm very excited to be presenting this webinar for you today, <clears throat> excuse me, as it has to do with a topic that I'm very passionate about. And also, as Quinn mentioned, obviously, the concept of achieving health equity so that our communities are able to get better health outcomes is a very important point in all of the work that Access Health Connecticut does. So without further ado, I want to introduce you first to an organization that actually provided the information that we're presenting to you today. We're very close to Health Equity Solutions, and I want to give a shout out to Dr. Takesha Everett and Claudine Constant, who work for Health Equity Solutions, and they advocate for policy changes that will hopefully result in better health outcomes for all of our communities. Uh, they are experts in this subject, and we're able to work together with us to provide the information for today. So thank you, thank you for Health Equity Solutions. And a little bit more information about them. Their vision is for every Connecticut resident to obtain optimal health regardless of race, ethnicity, or socioeconomic status. Their mission is to promote policies, programs, and practices that result in equitable health care access, delivery, and outcomes for all people of Connecticut. A little bit more about the approach. I don't want to get into all the details here, but I think this is a wonderful infographic that shows you how the organization Health Equity Solutions um, gets, uh, keeps itself busy by uh, conducting education, awareness, policy, and advocacy, which is one of the strengths that the organization brings for us. They build a great deal of partnerships across the state, participate in coalitions that share the same goals, and they help the state of Connecticut uh, do a great deal of planning um, in order to be able to accomplish these goals. First, Let's talk a little bit about framing and definitions. How would you define health equity? How would you define health? Actually, I apologize. Um, health 
is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. That is the definition of the word health by the World Health Organization. And as you can see in this graphic, health outcomes can be affected in very many ways, particularly by factors that often are not in the control of the individual um, members of different communities. I wanted to show you here how uh, the physical environment in which we live can affect our health outcomes, our own health behaviors, of course, uh, in relation to how we uh, nourish ourselves and whether or not we're able to avoid behaviors that affect our health negatively. Also the quality of the clinical care that is accessible to us. And uh, sure enough, some, uh, a good number of the socioeconomic factors that any individual uh, lives with that can ultimately affect the health outcomes for themselves and their family. Often we hear the terms health disparities and health inequities. And it's a little bit hard sometimes to um, really have a, a, a clear understanding of the fact that there are, there, they are not interchangeable terms. And by health disparity, we are talking about a difference in health status among groups. And the key word there is groups. The burden of illness of one population group relative to another which is often measured to a reference group or the preferred group, and it looks at rates of disease. So health disparities is where we actually measure, for example, the existence of, let's say, uh, diabetes among an entire part of our population in relation to another part of the population. So we may talk about the incidence of diabetes among African-American communities in relation to white communities, for example. And that gap is what we refer to by the words health disparity. Health equity, on the other hand, is a difference in health status because of situations outside of the control of the individual. These differences are linked to the systematic, avoidable, and unjust distribution of resources. It is systemic and systematic focus and considers the distribution of resources. So here, where we talk about health inequities, we are looking at each individual and how his or her, their health outcomes are affected by situations that are outside of their control. We're going to look at this in more detail in just a couple of slides, but this is where I want you to think about, for example, what your environment may be. And by environment, we mean the neighborhood that you live in uh, that, for example, may be more or less safe that actually can have, we generally don't think of it this way, but that actually can have that factor, can have an effect on your health outcomes. Let's move on to the next slide and talk in more detail about health inequities. Health inequities exist for the following reasons. And I really like this graph uh, that we have here. There are structural and institutional isms by isms, we're talking about all of the ways in which uh, folks are uh, discriminated against, um, where uh, we make assumptions about individuals based on, for example, their race, ethnicity, gender, and other categories. Um, <clears throat> it also creates the environment of inequitable healthcare access as well as inequitable access to quality care, which are both uh, related obviously, but quality care can really have an ultimate effect on your health outcomes. Inequitable opportunities also can include education, employment, housing, and food. So in our graph here, for example, 
we're looking at, let's say, if we were to plug in an example of a particular individual who has a lower level of education or it lives in an income level that is below the poverty line or simply it's of, uh, of, of a level that it's not sustainable. Um, may also, this individual may also live in a neighborhood that is not safe. And one of the ways to think about that is not only are you in peril because uh, the neighborhood that you live in uh, it may not be safe, but for example, you're also prevented from being able to do certain activities in your own neighborhood that could be beneficial to your health. And yet you don't have access to that because of the, by virtue of the fact uh, that that is the situation in your neighborhood. And of course, race and ethnicity is another factor uh, that can ultimately affect your individual health outcomes. Why health equity? Here you have a picture of the, I would say, the distribution of a resource that is equitably distributed, meaning everyone gets the same piece, uh, and yet the result is not an equitable health outcome. <coughs> Excuse me. And so this is what we would term to be equality. And as you can see, for the purposes of looking at health equity, this picture shows us a distribution of a resource that is simply not enough because it may be equal in distribution, but the result is not equal at all. Uh, our taller um, uh, young person on the picture is able to see everything about the baseball game, our somewhat shorter uh, individual, uh, of less stature uh, in the picture is still able to see, but perhaps not as much. And obviously the child on the right-hand side uh, is not able to see the show, the um, game at all. Uh, so we need to dig further into, um, you know, what some of these definitions are. And as you can see here, it says that equality is a state of being equal, especially in status, rights, and opportunities. By status, rights, and opportunities, we're talking about those resources and how they are distributed. However, if we look at equity, which essentially looks at what is the ultimate result of the distribution of that resource, whatever it may be. In this case, you see that the boxes uh, have been distributedly, distributed in a different manner and therefore the result is that all three of the individuals trying to watch the baseball game are in fact able to get the same result and that is what we mean by equity in our case we define it as fairly distributing health determinant resources and decreasing differentials in overall health and health outcomes so again the difference here which is the point that I really like to make when I speak about health equity, is looking at the result. What is the end game here in terms of having a positive outcome on the health of all individuals? What we aim to see in how we fight for health equity. And by the way, when I talk about health equity, I also like to remind folks that um, the, Health equity, the fight for changing resources and changing policies for health equity is actually, and I agree with this, very much considered a social justice issue. So that when we look at it from that perspective, you can see that because people's health outcomes are affected by factors that are beyond their control, whether it be their uh, ethnicity, their race, their gender, and other categories. Uh, it's, it's basically a, an issue of fairness and equality, and therefore it truly is a social justice issue. Uh, what we aim to see to be able to accomplish 
uh, better health outcomes for everyone is obviously we want health equity and this concept to increase, ensuring that all populations and individuals have access to optimal health, regardless of their race and ethnicity. And of course, we want health disparities and health inequities to decrease. Uh, disease burden reduced for racial groups is one of the outcomes that we are after. And avoidable differences in healthcare access and outcomes between groups we want uh, to reduce uh, because there are in fact avoidable differences. Now let's talk about the concepts referring to in the social determinants of health. Here is a point in which when I have many of the conversations I have about health equity, uh, a lot of people who are not involved in this work may not uh, understand and it is a sort of a uh, shift in how we view the concept of health and the concept of being able to be a healthy community. Uh, many individuals uh, are not going to readily think of oh, there are factors that do affect you, um, that you can't control, that have to do with uh, where you may live, uh, what uh, conditions uh, you live under, what your education may be, things like that. And those are the social determinants of health that we want to explore a little bit more here. The social determinants of health are the conditions in which people are born, grow, live, work, and age. These circumstances are shaped by the distribution of money, power, and resources at a global, national, and local levels. And this is the crux of why I always say that fighting for health equity is fighting for a social justice issue because everyone does deserve to have the best chance at having positive health outcomes as possible. You can see in our picture here that there are many such factors. There are factors regarding uh, the um, makeup of your family, the housing in which you live, and the quality or lack of quality of the housing, and the quality of the education that is accessible to you. Um, there are factors like languages. Many of us you know, know and have seen many cases in which a negative health outcome can actually come from a language difficulty. Um, our environment and uh, the things that uh, we live under are also affected by institutional racism. Uh, um, the culture as well uh, of which, under which we all live, we, you know, our, our culture, whether it comes from our ethnicity, or any other factor uh, can also affect in many ways the health outcomes. And of course, gender. Gender is, uh, is a known factor that uh, depending on the gender that you are, you may or may not have many of these factors that affect your health outcomes. Here's another example of the social determinants of health that we are discussing under the categories of economic stability, neighborhood and physical environment, education, food, community and social context, as well as the healthcare system itself. And as you can see in every one of these categories, there are specific factors that can really affect your ability to attain positive health outcomes. Uh, for example, under economic stability, whether or not you're employed, what level of income your family has, what your expenses are, your debt, whether you have many medical bills, uh, and whether you have financial support that helps you and your family be able to uh, have your own needs met. Uh, all of these economic factors can actually reflect themselves in whether you're able to access uh, positive health outcomes or not and be uh, a healthy part of your community. One of the other social determinants of health that we talk about very frequently is the neighborhood and physical environment. Housing, transportation, safety, parks, 
uh, playgrounds and walkability. And I point to walkability, for example, as a very clear example of how health inequities can affect you. Think about it. In the age of um, uh, uh, messages that help people understand that exercise and nutrition can really affect your health, if you live in an environment that is not walkable, or perhaps an environment where you do not feel safe, it is very unlikely, and, and if on top of that, you happen to live with very low incomes, it's going to reduce your ability to exercise and have options to be able to exercise. Therefore, there is an inequity in how you can continue to work on your own health. It's been shown additionally that uh, your access to education, as we have all of these examples here, uh, literacy, language, early childhood education, vocational training, and higher education. Also, uh, many studies have shown that can have an effect, uh, and there are inequities uh, uh, based on what level of education you have. Food is another social determinant of, of health, and under that we have hunger and access to healthy options. Many of us have heard of the term food deserts. In case you have not, a food desert is basically a location, a neighborhood, a city, a town, where access to healthy options for eating is very limited. So for example, we have urban environments where folks who are residents do not have access uh, to a supermarket where they can actually uh, not just buy the basics uh, for what they serve on their table at home, but also access fresh produce and have more options for healthy food to be able to obtain. And so a food desert is a location that does not have the supermarket. It does not have the healthy foods within that neighborhood that are available to people. And that is what we refer to as a food desert. Obviously, we know that nutrition plays a very strong part in how we're able to obtain positive health outcomes or not. Uh, there are community and social contexts that also affect our health, social integration, support systems, community engagement, and of course, discrimination. I'd like to focus on community engagement because I find it really interesting uh, that we have found that the more you are civically engaged in your community, whether that's your neighborhood, your city, uh, uh, or your community of whatever category it may be, your increased community engagement can actually help you avail yourself to more resources that eventually can help you obtain better health outcomes. And then last but not least, we have the healthcare system. Uh, health coverage, uh, as you know, Access Health Connecticut, uh, our mission is all about providing health coverage. Uh, it's also about helping individuals that obtain the coverage through us and really anyone in the community to be able to avail themselves to using that coverage to the best benefit of their health. Uh, we have the issue of provider availability. We know that there are shortages in certain areas uh, of certain providers that again can affect your health because you simply cannot access them. And of course, provider linguistic and cultural competency as well as the actual quality of care. Um, provider linguistic and cultural competency, this is an area that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I find that uh, it, it, it feels almost overwhelming to look at the tremendous need for training that exists amongst all of our health providers. Uh, there are health providers that are working very, very hard to increase the positive health outcomes in the communities that they serve, uh, but can be, uh, come, they can come up against barriers uh, because of their lack of understanding 
on linguistic and cultural competencies. So there are many efforts out there uh, trying to bring this information into the hands of our providers. And it's, it's a really important uh, factor to take care of because it can really uh, make a difference in how the treatment that an individual client or patient receives uh, and how they are able to receive it, how they are able to abide by the doc, uh, orders of their healthcare provider uh, and how they can stay safe in their treatment. The health outcomes uh, underneath this category, this layout, this picture, uh, you know, it's affected, I'm sorry, it actually is divided by many categories. In this case, the examples we have is, you know, rates of mortality, morbidity, life expectancy, healthcare expenditures, health status, and functional limitations. I have a four minute video that I'm going to play with for you and it's called the Unequal Opportunity Race. And this video is meant really to put all of these concepts together and help us understand why it is that I'm saying that uh, health equity, the, the work of health equity is the work of social justice and it helps us understand why there are some factors that people cannot control that affect their healthcare quality. So if you give me a moment, I will fire up the video. And for four minutes, we'll watch it and then we'll come back to our conversation.
Great, thank you. I hope that uh, that was an enjoyable short video. Uh, it certainly, um, you know, provided a, a different way of looking at the uh, barriers that can exist, that can be thrown in front of people for many, many, many different reasons. Uh, I really uh, enjoyed seeing, um, well, I certainly don't enjoy seeing these things happening, but it's eye-opening to me uh, to see the many categories, such as the, you know, the unequal education that you may receive, that can affect your health outcomes. Uh, the fact that you're not in the old boys network, I saw that used in the video as well, that can affect your health outcome in many different ways. So let's talk a little bit about what we can do about it. As we fight and work towards health equity for everyone, it's really important that we pay attention to how systemic issues have and continue to impact individuals and communities. It's important that we advocate for systemic change within and outside of our institutions. And the advocacy part is very important to me. We can talk about that in more detail. And of course, we want to advocate for health equity in, by way of redistribution of health resources. And of course, fighting for racial justice is one of the uh, issues that can affect everyone's health outcome. And therefore, again, I go back to the same concept all the time. Health equity, fighting and trying to achieve health equity is in fact a social justice issue. There are many ways in which groups uh, and individuals and uh, uh, people in power are working towards ameliorating so many of these factors that affect everyone's ability to obtain a healthy life. Uh, and I am honored to be part of some of those fights as, as well as you know, watching what uh, groups that care about this issue tremendously have been able to accomplish here in Connecticut. So what are we trying to accomplish in the end? On our way to equality, which we looked at earlier on and does not necessarily achieve the needs that every individual deserves to have in terms of their health equity, to equity, which is a fair distribution of resources that achieve a better outcome. But really, ultimately, in the end, what those of us who are involved in this work really want to accomplish is liberation. And by liberation, oh, I apologize, I went a little too far. If you see in our graphic here by liberation, we mean not just redistributing the resources that can help us achieve better health, but ultimately completely removing the barriers that keep us from being able to accomplish that. So that is the path that many organizations and many individuals committed to this work uh, are working towards uh, from equality to equity and ultimately, of course, liberation for all and better health outcomes and a healthier life for everyone. Uh, I want to again recognize the work of Health Equity Solutions here in Connecticut. This is their contact information. We very much appreciate Health Equity Solutions uh, providing us this very basic um, uh, set of information to use for today's webinar, uh, but I do promote them very much. And if you would like to follow Health Equity on social media, here's where you can look them up their website, their phone number, uh, and of course their address and their location. So it's a good organization to follow. Health Equity Solutions is especially focusing on public policy issues. So they are the group amongst many others, but they are the one that is focusing on really pushing the systems of power to make changes and policy changes, for example, at our state level, by way of public policy and legislation. Uh, and in fact, Health Equity Solutions had a wonderful victory uh, just last year in being able to, in one year, pass a bill 
that puts us on the way to being able to provide, um, uh, I'm totally blanking out on the term, I apologize, but the ability to have uh, health workers that work directly with communities uh, that are underserved. So I congratulate them on that, and I once again say thank you. Thank you for helping us on the information. All right, now I'm gonna flip back a little bit to the work of Access Health Connecticut. And the reason you are invited to this webinar is because you, in some way, shape, or form, have been a partner of Access Health Connecticut, and uh, you are helping us get the word out to all of our communities, especially the underserved communities, uh, to be sure that they have access to the coverage that they deserve that has been provided by the Affordable Care Act. We are constantly looking to establish partnership, partnerships with community groups and different organizations. Partners share information about access to health coverage with communities all over Connecticut. Um, we, Access Health Connecticut, provide the resources and invite dialogue with all of our partners. And here's an example of some of the community partners that we have established across the state. Community health centers, Department of Labor, hospitals, libraries, and many others, of course. Here's a graphic that uh, shows you a little bit of the success that Access Health Connecticut has had in establishing community partnerships across the state. What does partner engagement look like? We can be helpful to our partners by providing uh, speakers at events, informational training sessions. We can have the outreach team, of which I am a part of, uh, tabling at your events or events in your community. Access Health Connecticut is always pleased to uh, host educational webinars, just like the one today. And one resource that I really stress to everyone, I really want you, if you haven't already, gone to the community partner website at learn.accesshealthct.com forward slash community. That website has information about events, links to our newsletter, printable educational materials, and contact information for various Access Health Connecticut departments. Uh, the website for the community, the community website, I should say, is constantly updated for information uh, that I think can be very helpful to everyone who's interested in helping all of our communities have access to health insurance and the coverage that they deserve. Some ways in that you can help you as a partner can help us spread the word are by placing Access Health Connecticut posters somewhere visible to your members and the public, by displaying Access Health Connecticut op open enrollment brochures for your community, by sending email to your membership, talking with about the information which we're happy to provide the content for. Any partner organization is welcome to link Access Health Connecticut from their website and of course, social media posts if your organization is involved in social media. We're always, always pleased to provide content uh, that can help you post information that will reach the community that you serve. So here are some examples, further examples on how we engage the community. We can provide speaking engagements in English and Spanish. Uh, we can uh, go to local state events, fairs, festivals. Perhaps at some point you have seen us at one of the uh, community events that we cover. Uh, we bring a lot of educational materials. We're always striving to have meaningful conversations with the people that we interact with. Uh, we provide educational webinars like today's webinar. We provide informational materials, research and surveys, and planning sessions. If you would like us to come to you, to come to your community, here is the best way to contact the outreach team for Access Health Connecticut. If you email us at outreach at accesshealthct.com or fill out the form that's in the community partner website, let us know the details of the event that, or the service that you would like us to provide, and we will do our best to be able to get to you. Some resources for you to look at. I can't repeat myself enough about the community website. 
learn.accesshealthct.com forward slash community. Go to that website, check it out, see the resources that we have available to you, and let us know if there should be anything that you feel that we need to add um, and include in this way of disseminating information. You can search for in-person help at support.accesshealthct.com. You can sign up for our monthly newsletter, chock full of information and updates about what's going on. And of course, I'm very grateful we are very grateful that you joined today's webinar and hope that you're able to participate in more because we're uh, very frequently offering them. One of the activities we're heavily involved in right now, and I would love to have any of our participants today join us, are our regional planning meetings. Regional planning meetings, as you can see here, we have scheduled five of them as one of our outreach tactics. And by that, I mean that uh, in the regional planning meeting, we are looking to hear from you as our partner. We are looking to hear from you as a community leader. And we are looking to hear from you in terms of what are the things that Access Health Connecticut has done that work well, which ones need improvement. We are happily able to use the regional planning meetings to have more detailed conversations that we may be able to have otherwise. And so look at the dates that we have offered you here. And if at all possible, make a plan and join us. Uh, we provide lunch, uh, always a delicious lunch, uh, to encourage people to participate. And we make sure that we have a, a viable and very interesting conversation that ultimately results in Access Health Connecticut being able to provide better and better services. So unless, if you are not yet signed up as a community partner, here's how you can reach us. Quinn Tran, who is our moderator today, and myself, we are both part of Access Health Connecticut Outreach Team. You can call us at this number, 860-327-5517, and reach us directly as the Outreach Team. You can email us at outreach at accesshealthct.com, visit the famous community website, and of course, you can follow Access Health Connecticut on social media by looking us up at Access Health CT. Okay, that is the extent of my presentation today. Clearly, uh, health equity is an issue of social justice, and it is an issue that we could delve much deep, in a much more deeper uh, way, uh, perhaps in further webinars, but we're always happy to get your questions if you have a question that you have not communicated to us yet, feel free to put it in the chat room. And with that, uh, Quinn, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Evelyn, for that very um, informative and eye-opening presentation. Uh, as Evelyn said, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to enter them now in the chat box. I'm going to start with some questions that we got from participants as they were registering um, for the webinar today. So Evelyn, the first question that I have for you is, how can we better assist consumers with needs on mental health issues? That's a very important question. It's a very important subject. Uh, we do know that mental health issues, even though there has been a push for many years to equalize access to mental health services, we have not yet achieved equity uh, in mental health, uh, in the availability to treat mental health with equity in terms of its relation to our physical health. So I think that this is a very important matter to pay attention to. And the things that I encourage people to do is to get involved in the fight for public policy in the area of mental health. An organization that does a tremendous job in fighting for public policy changes that will ultimately make it more equitable to receive services and have a state of health in, in terms of your mental health is NAMI, the National Association of, uh, I apologize again. <laughs> I see it, the National Alliance for Mental Illness. Yes, National Association for Mental Illness. And Connecticut has a, a, a great uh, chapter uh, they go by um, the letters N-A-M-I. So look up NAMI and get involved 
with organizations like that. It will give you a better place to actually participate in making change overall. We're constantly fighting for our clients. We're constantly fighting to have access uh, to what uh, people's needs are. Uh, and in the case of mental health, we also need to change the policy. So getting involved in that way is one of my best recommendations. Great. Um, and Evelyn, what's being done to help with social determinants of health? In Connecticut in particular, it's interesting because the state of Connecticut, the state legislature, uh, has been looking at health equity issues for some time now. And um, they are, as a legislature, trying to sort of attack issues uh, one at a time. And for example, the, the bill that was passed last year uh, to get us on the road to being able to provide more community health workers uh, is one of the examples in which you can, we can make changes to that public policy. Uh, other areas, there are a good number of organizations. I always talk about health equity solutions because their focus is so strong on public policy, but the reality is that there are many organizations. The Connecticut Health Foundation uh, is very uh, determined to address health equity issues as their top priority. There are health centers that understand because they serve their communities and see the disparities that, it, that exist that are also joining the fight uh, to be able to change policies uh, this way. So there are a lot of individuals and organizations that are committed to this work, um, but we need to continue it and get, in, get more involvement uh, as far as civic participation to sort of move the needle uh, to where uh, um, the government and entities that really have an effect uh, on folks' ability to obtain good health um, can actually make the change. Great. And another question that we got uh, from a participant is, what is Access Health doing to promote health equity year-round? Great question. Access Health Connecticut, a couple of years ago, decided that uh, after they had already under their belt uh, the first three open enrollment periods, where the focus, of course, was getting people enrolled and reducing the rate of um, uninsured individuals in Connecticut, but Access Health Connecticut made a very strategic decision to extend all outreach efforts throughout the year. And that is one of the decisions that they have made that is really paying off because we as the outreach team are out establishing partnerships, developing information and distributing information, uh, and increasing the depth with which we can reach different communities uh, all year round, not just related to the open enrollment period. The next thing that Access Health Connecticut has made a strong commitment to is clearly really just the whole concept of health equity. In fact, uh, in their mission statement, uh, one of uh, the very clear goals is to uh, reduce health disparities. And with that in mind, the management of Access Health Connecticut have worked very hard to infuse uh, this, the importance of this concept across the organization. And so we are looking at more and more ways in which talking about not just getting coverage, but also um, being able to use coverage to educate the communities about how to use the coverage to the best of their abilities and to the best benefit for their health is in fact a way to reduce health disparities. And so with that goal in mind, Access Health Connecticut is working very hard to achieve that. Thanks, Evelyn. I don't see any new questions in the chat box. I do have one more question for you, Evelyn. Uh, but before I do that, uh, we have a quick survey that I'm gonna post the link to right now. Um, it's just, so we really welcome your feedback on today's webinar. So before you leave uh, the webinar today, if you can just take a couple minutes to fill out that survey that I posted the link to, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and so, Evelyn, my last question for you is, how does Connecticut compare uh, to other states nationwide in terms of health equity? 
Um, great question. I, I don't have actual data in front of me um, at the moment, um, but I think that one of the best ways to look at that is to touch bases with organizations like Health Equity Solutions. And in much of the work that I have done, however, uh, I do believe that Connecticut is, um, you know, I may not have a, a, a statistical uh, uh, numeric uh, piece of information right now, but I do believe that we are quite at the forefront of much of this work in comparison to other states. Um, and we know this because our state legislature has been discussing these issues uh, for quite some time and trying to make public policy changes. And also because we have very, very strong uh, institutions in Connecticut that uh, have made health equity a top priority. So although we all have a tremendous amount of work to achieve what we're trying, what we're talking about here, the, the truth is that we also have the infrastructure that is very strong that will continue to work at making sure that uh, we eventually achieve the social justice issue of health equity for everyone. Great. Well, thank you so much again, Evelyn, for taking your time today to talk to us about health equity. Um, and thank you so much to all of our participants for uh, joining us today. And uh, I'd like to stress again, uh, if you can take just a couple minutes to fill out our survey, um, it'll really help us to figure out uh, what other webinar topics in the future that we can offer to you um, based on you know, the, uh, the topics that most interest you. Um, again, thank you so much for your time, and we will uh, be sure to talk to you soon. Thank you, Quinn, and thank you to everyone.